Yo guys, real quick before the video starts, I'm a little sick while recording this, so I'm sorry if I sound like it, but I wanted to let you guys know that I just dropped some brand new merch. We got hoodies, we got shirts, and more, so go head over, click the first link in the description, and check out the new store. And for Cyber Monday, everything is 15% off for the rest of today, the day this video drops. Thank you guys, and let's get into the video. At the lunch table when I was in high school, it seemed like there would always be something going on that prevented me from just peacefully consuming my meal. And not to say that it was always a bad thing because sometimes it could be entertaining. Like maybe two people are just roasting the Ooh. out of each other or something. Boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Oh! And that would be entertaining, right? But other times it crossed the line and the lunch table shenanigans got out of hand. All right, never quite that bad. But the high school I went to had this field, right? And all the way at the back of the field, they had a few small picnic tables. And one of those picnic tables was where we would always eat lunch at. And there would be tables like inside the cafeteria with lots of space and not in a hundred degree weather. But nah, we decided the move was to try and cram like 10 people around one small picnic table. One leg is like two pounds away from giving out. The two people who walked all the way out there last would always have to stand. Birds are like dropping bombs on people from the trees above. For some reason, it always seemed to hit the same person. But hey, that's where we chose to sit at. Probably because the thing about this location is it was at the complete edge of the school, so it was isolated. But because it was so far away from the actual school, nobody was really out there to monitor anything. So it seemed like every other day, somebody was just wilding out for no reason at all. And to one side of the table was this fence, an alley, and a neighborhood. And to the other side was this field with a soccer goal almost directly behind our table. So you can probably already guess how this is going to go if people are trying to kick goals all around the same table we're trying to eat at. Give it like 10 minutes into the start of lunch and soccer balls would be flying all over the place. Sometimes they just roll over, sometimes they'd be flying through the air. And the main reason this got to be so annoying was because someone would get like clocked in the head and instead of, you know, apologizing, they'd just be laughing and then the same exact thing would just happen again the next day. So it got pretty aggravating and it got to the point where they'd run up to get their ball back but nobody was having that. They weren't getting their ball back. Instead, it would get drop kicked to like the opposite end of the field and just roll and roll all the way down. I mean, come on, you can't be nailing people in the head and just expect the ball to be handed back to you. But my first year, freshman year, right? I already took a massive L like less than a month in with this whole lunch table and soccer goal situation. Now the goal wasn't directly in the center of the table, it was a little offset to one side, so when they kicked it at an angle and missed, it would come flying over to us. So like four weeks into my freshman year, the ball comes flying over, and this one guy, he's all pissed off, he picks up the ball and he's all like, you know what, screw them for always kicking the ball over here. And this man looks like he's setting up for the drop kick of the century, looking like he's ready to drop kick the ball into oblivion. And I'm standing pretty much right next to him at this point, but I see this dude setting up for the drop kick, and by the time it registered in my mind what was about to happen, it was already too late to move out of the way. It was at this moment that he knew. And it would have been fine if he had a straight kick, but he kind of hit the ball off the side of his foot, and it hit me in the worst possible area. Not the arm, not the leg, well, really the second worst possible area, but it flies straight into my face, and the impact, like, oh my goodness, I think I might have been taken to another dimension for a few seconds. I can't believe I even stayed conscious, because that thing hit me full force, point blank. And the craziest part was, when I looked in the mirror, my face looked fine, no bruises or marks or anything, and I still wonder how that was even possible. I mean, I wasn't complaining, but it definitely still shook me up. And getting nailed in the head with a soccer ball wasn't exclusive to just me. This happened to many people, or we'd just be chilling, eating lunch, and they'd miss a goal because they were garbage, and it'd fly over and either bop somebody, or like tear through somebody's sandwich and just completely destroy it. And that was another common one, food just getting absolutely obliterated. I had a lot of near misses too, I can't tell you how many times the ball just barely skimmed right over my head. Every day, just by choosing to eat in that spot, it was taking a risk. And you're probably saying, Saga, are you dumb? Like, why wouldn't you guys just simply move somewhere else? You're kind of idiots for not moving. And what I had to say to that is, honestly, you're 100% right. Because this was basically a daily occurrence. It was like a war between the people at the table and the people playing soccer, and every day was a new battle. It was a territorial issue at this point. So since drop kicking the ball to the opposite end of the field was just standard procedure at this point, one day the ball rolls over and this kid goes to drop kick it, but he was holding in his hand one of those like giant one gallon water jugs, you know, the ones made out of like really tough plastic. 
I don't know why he didn't just set it down first and then drop kick the ball because now he's trying to drop kick a ball while holding a water jug at the same time and I guess his hand eye coordination got messed up a little bit because somewhere in the process of trying to kick the ball he let go of the water jug too and made full force solid contact with it. The ball got like shanked off to one side so instead of directly hitting the ball he just directly slammed his foot into the hard plastic water jug and the cracking sound it made when his foot made contact with the jug was so loud this man let out a scream and that thing took him down. He immediately just fell straight backwards while still yelling. He's like clutching his foot on the ground. It looked and sounded extremely painful. He was lucky not to break any of his toes. But sometimes drop kicking the ball away just wasn't enough to get even when certain lines were crossed. And on one particular day, this one guy that ate with us is standing up next to the table holding his lunch tray, just trying to enjoy his meal, right? When I see out of my peripheral vision, the ball is flying over to us, just straight zooming through the air, and I see the path that it's taking, and I'm just thinking like, oh man, here we go again. And it doesn't hit him, but it does hit his lunch tray. And the lunch trays were already weak in the first place, made out of like the cheapest styrofoam ever. Like they could already barely support holding the food it was supposed to. So when the soccer ball made contact, the whole thing just instantly crumbled, just gave up. Milk is flying everywhere, there's pizza on the ground, the chips are now just crumbs. Like this man's lunch was gone. And that was the tipping point for him. He walks over to the ball and instead of just drop kicking it like usual, he points to the kid that came for the ball and he's like, you know what? You lost your privileges. And he turns around, and you remember how I said there was a neighborhood on the other side of the fence? He launches the ball, not only over the first fence, but also clears the alley and the second wall, and sends it flying somewhere into the group of houses. I don't even know where it ended up. And then they're all like, yo, why would you do that to our ball, man? And I'm thinking like, bro, you just destroyed man's lunch. Like, what did you expect to happen? And I couldn't help from laughing when he told them that, they lost their privileges because he just kind of inserted himself into the position of authority that decides whether they're allowed to have a soccer ball or not. I don't think they ever even got their ball back. Somebody in one of those houses probably got a free soccer ball though. Good times eating at that spot. One thing I for sure won't miss though is having to worry about getting blindsided by a soccer ball every time I sat down to eat. Thank you guys so much for watching the animation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to go cop yourself some merch. It really helps to support the channel. I'll put the link in the description. It's going to be the first link. And I will see you guys in the next one.